Steve. Well, it's certainly one of mine. Thunder Road. Bruce Springsteen. I won't hear a bad word said against the boss. A lot no. of people dismiss him, as you said in the past, as mm. being some kind of stadium rocker, but you can't listen to Will a song you... like that and not be moved. Surely, Carl. Yeah, it's alright, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> a passionate man. Yeah. What? So, Carl. No, 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 it's right. So, oh, that's, certain songs like that was that was all right. It didn't sound mm. anything. If it wasn't Bruce Springsteen, if someone new came out saying like that, I'd, I'd go, yeah, it's all right. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're a regular yeah. Simon Cowell, aren't you? <laughs> I, I don't know if I like music as much as I used to now. That's what happens when you work in it, isn't it? Because was yeah. a, d Danny Minogue was on the telly. In the Is week. it like when you work in a sweet factory and you, you don't you don't nick the Mars bars after a couple of months? Yeah. Yeah. Danny Min Minogue was on the telly in the week, right? Yeah. And. Uh, she was doing doing a medley. Yeah. Why do people do them? Well, to try do and get all the hits. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean, yeah. But who's that busy that they haven't got time to listen to a full album or... <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like, like, it's like a meal in pill form. Yeah. Well, I like most of Danny Minogue's hits, but I don't like... The whole song. Yeah, exactly. So, if you want to just, like, pop the best bits down, 30 seconds... Put them all together. Yeah. Well, I've got um a Stars on Forty Five record from the seventies. Do you remember those? Yeah. Stars on Forty Five. But it's that like you say, it was I mean this one had kind of it would be a snatch of Stevie Wonder, followed by the MASH theme, followed by Layla, just the intro. It was sort of yeah. it's not music. Yeah. It's just... yeah. Well we do a bit of that, don't we though? That's what DJing is, isn't it? It's a bit of everything. But we play the whole song, don't we, often? Mm. Yeah, we we're better, aren't we, Carl? Oh. So what do you want to talk about today? Uh do you want to look at the list? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's got described looks. That's our list we've put. So this is a very amusing sort of link about describing your look. I don't know. What's this? I don't remember this. No, I just was thinking, like, uh, you know, everyone's got an idea in their head, right? Of what well, well. Like. <laughs> 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 Careful, Carl. <laughs> don't open yourself up to criticism. Go on, yeah. Everyone's got well, an idea. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got an idea of uh, what they look like and stuff. Uh, if someone wanted to know what, what I look like or what Ricky looked like or what you look like Steve if that yeah right? um what would you use to describe yourself do you know what I mean words not really I don't understand what what do you mean well like uh someone who doesn't know us we've got to describe and we've what, what's what's the game to hopefully get some sort of interpersonal language going so you know they've got the same image as you to well, a certain yeah, I, extent. I'm just thinking, if I was to meet Steve in a restaurant, yeah, right, I'd, 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 nothing I'd, untoward going on. We're just hanging out. We're no, just having a chat, just yeah, having sure. a normal night out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Who's paying? Because I mean, <laughs> is it expensive? Go Dutch, restaurant? go Dutch, go Dutch. <laughs> I mean, right. So, I, I I say to you, I'll I'll see you at eight, right, in yeah. this in this restaurant. I turn up at the door. It's a bit of a posh place, mm -hmm. right. Uh, so he's uh, Steve Merchant in. Yeah. And the waiter sort of goes, I I I don't know. What does he look like, right? And, uh, Where's he from? Just a f little French fella. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, what does he look like? So I'd the th thing I'd pick up on first, tall, tall lad. Tall, yeah. And then he goes, oh, well, you know, we got lots of tall people in, right? Yeah. And I go, oh, big eyes. Big <laughs> eyes. Yeah. And then he'd go, yeah, he's over there. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, you can have dinner and you can buy me dinner. I'm not sure you're going to get anywhere with me. If you're slagging me off. No, no, I'm not slagging you off though. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just yeah. using. Using what comes to mind when and can it, you. And can I just can, tall can and I, big eyes? Can I assume that they know? Like, could I say like easiest for me? Would I'd say uh, looks like Reg Varney from On the Buses? Would they understand that? Can I use sort of like yeah, references? Yeah, he's, he's, he's thirty odd. This this waiter, so he'll. Yeah, so I go, right, oh yeah. yes, it's, it's a Reg Varney is sitting over there. Yeah, so yeah, he went right. German towards the end. <laughs> See, <laughs> I describe you more, Rick. I think as. I would imagine, I'd say, have you ever seen that Johnny Vegas on the telly? <laughs> yeah. Imagine he was inflatable and he just let out a little bit of air. <laughs> well, at least that's, that's nice. That's what Ricky would look as like. As opposed to, like, you know, pumping harder. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, um, what I'll describe, Carl I'd describe as, you know those little red monkeys that you see on wildlife programmes, they're, they're in the trees and they scream when they see a, a, a <laughs> leopard or something. <laughs> I think so. Shave that. Just right. shave one of those little red monkeys and put some sort of, um, you know, old sort of Manchester gear on it, maybe. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know what I mean? A, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a yeah. banana rack and some baggy jeans. I'd uh, like to see how the waiter would react to that. Yeah. He's got a picture of a monkey, then he's got a picture of it shaved. <laughs> so yeah. he's got no hair, he's and then dressed like some kind of mank scally. There go, he's, he's over there. Yeah, he's over there, Carl's over there. That's what I do. Brilliant. So, uh, now, now coming up the verve, 
after that, an amusing link about gay handkerchiefs. <laughs> really? Looking forward to this. Lucky Man by The Verve on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl, what's the problem with gay ankies? You were. You played Bruce Springsteen last week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you said he had a. Uh, got a load of trouble on his hands when he had uh, had a hanky in his back pocket. Did I say that on air or.? Off well, we were just saying that famously on the cover of the Born to Run, uh, Born in the USA album. It's just him, isn't it, with uh, just the, the, his backside, basically, with yeah. uh, a red handkerchief. I wasn't looking. Well, I just... Uh, well, I, well, I did it for research purposes, <laughs> for this amazing link. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, he had a red handkerchief, I think, in his right-hand pocket, and apparently yeah, that signifies uh, homosexuality, apparently, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, I thought it was which way you take it, I don't know. These are those myths, aren't they? Right, yeah, well, exactly, I don't even know if, if this know. is... No, well, I, I read up about it. Okay. Right. Just research. And, uh, it's all sort of, you know, you've got all different coloured ankies. Are they? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, it depends what pocket you put it in yeah. as well. So you've got, like, the different colours, yeah. different pockets. Yeah. And, uh, Sorry, how many variations are there? Different pockets is what? Well, you've got, like, what? Your, your back pocket, your right back pocket. But what do they mean? Pocket. What do you mean? Well, what do they signify? You can't just tell us they signify so much. What do they signify? Well, some some stuff that we don't really want to talk about, to be honest. What? Sort of uh, stuff that gays are into. <laughs> Wait. That's what? So what do you mean? Bar they, were... Barbara Streisand records. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eurovision. No, like a couple of things that were there that I know we can mention. He said something about. <laughs> I love that. What he thinks he can't mention. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Decency. What is this? 1956. No, no, no. But I mean. It isn't just, you know, having it away. It's <laughs> having it away! I love him! No, having it away! <laughs> you get up to some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he didn't want to offend, but he's yeah. offended a lot more people yeah, yeah. by saying of they course. get up to some weird stuff. Right. In your opinion. Yeah, what do you mean? No, do I, what, no but don't, don't, if it's, if, if there is something that I don't know about that it's like you can't say on the radio. Yeah, I don't, uh, I'd, I'd rather not. But what do you mean weird stuff? Well, one of them, right? If you've got a red anky, Right? Yeah. In your right pocket. Like right? Bruce. Yeah. That's that exactly what, what Bruce had, yeah. Right, well apparently then, Bruce is an armpit freak. An, ar an armpit freak? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> really? No. No. But Carl. that's very specific. Carl. Seriously. Well, what, what, okay, right, okay. What else is there then? Sorry, is there some kind of homosexual body that sat down and, and came up with this at some point? Well, you say we've got, well, this is getting crazy, you've got like a blue handkerchief in your top breast pocket, I don't know what that means, you need to sit down, there's some kind of summit. Figure out what it means. Yeah, it, it, it's just that you're not you're not free from it either. So if you were to go in in, in like a gay bar, yeah. which you know you might do if you're straight anyway, because they're you know good good places I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> you can't actually go in there if you've got a cold because every coloured hanky represents something. Right. So if I was to go in, had a bit of a, a sniffle. sniffle, I could get into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> right. Well, for that, Marks and Spencer's white linen hanky, that means. You like to be tied up and whipped. Yeah. There was another one, um, armpit freak we've covered. Uh, yeah, armpit freak is done. <laughs> we've covered. An armpit freak? <laughs> oh, I don't really know what that means. So, uh, know. Right, okay, yeah. Well, there was just one other thing, like a blue and white one, <laughs> is if you're into sailors. To so sailors? Like, yeah, if you have a little blue and white anky, that's in your left pocket. Yeah. Right. Um, blue and white equals sailor. That's so it. I wanted to ask you something. You know, um, but again, we got to be careful here. You know when um, uh, you wouldn't leave the the building that was on fire because um, uh, you were you were standing proud. Hang on, we need this. So some people now don't know what you're talking about. You, Carl, you were on holiday. Yeah, on you'd, holiday in Tenerife, right? Yeah, you'd, you'd had a moment of intimacy with your girlfriend. Yeah. yeah, a knock on the door. You had to stop and get up. You peeked around the door. It was a fireman saying, "Get out!" But you didn't want to leave because you had a yeah. Yeah. It was a little yeah. yeah. But what I what I what I don't understand is you maintained that while looking at a a Spanish man dressed as a fireman. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Is that is that the fact? You maintained. I'm sorry to say you you maintained a um you know arousal whilst looking 
at a gentleman dressed yeah, as a fireman. No, 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 is, is that, these are the facts and they are undisputed. What, did but you I'm maintain- not, I'm, not, I'm that, not a machine that, though. Do you know what I mean? I can't turn it on, turn it off. Right. But, well, yeah, but, but, but you were talking, I, I just thought you were talking to a fireman, you'd have probably lost it. I don't know, but you didn't. No, you, but the you, other thing was, <laughs> I mean, I was talking to Suzanne about it again, right? Yeah. She said, what are you talking about that for? Right. I said, oh, it just cropped up, right? Yeah. And, uh, the dilemma was, you see, I wanted to try and make sure that it was a proper fire because that was the last condom we had, right? <laughs> so it would have ruined the night. So yeah. I was, I, I didn't want to like, it was like, you know, well, what's going on? Is yeah. it, is, is, is it, do we yeah. need to get out? Yeah. Is it a proper fire? Yeah. And you, uh, and, t and talking so, to this man in uniform, was he, wh what did he look like? Was he quite, was he good looking? Did he look like Ricky Martin, so? Was he good looking? Was he good looking in his uniform? I, I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember. Did he have a moustache? <laughs> Better play a record, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Is this bringing it back? What? You look uncomfortable. What, what? Did you just switch this on with your hand? <laughs> Flaming Lips, and that's Fight Test. Lips and Test. <laughs> lips <laughs> Test. On M. <laughs> we were talking there about uh, homosexual people, and I'm sure we'll move on to other topics. Um, but I just mentioned, my, I was talking to a friend of mine in the week, uh, Rufus, and he overheard, uh, he pieced together the, you know, sometimes if you overhear a conversation, you can piece together what's going on. Yeah. You know, and um, it sort of transpired from what he could, what he could make out, that one gay guy had just realised or just found out that his gay boyfriend uh, had um, maybe been having an affair and was on the phone um, and had called this person, the third party. So the other one was crying, wasn't it? The other one was crying in tears. Obviously, they just had a, a big argument about it. And all he heard on the phone was, was the guy saying in very kind of earnest tones, I'm going to do everything in my power to destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like to think what that was. No, what was he? You know, no more guest list to G A Y. <laughs> G A Y. I am going to uh, slash your diesel jeans with a pair of scissors. <laughs> oh, um, well, if they're listening now, I know. I mean, it's probably an emotional time for them. Yeah, but they probably don't think we're talking about them. No, not those. It's people. probably happened quite a lot this week. <laughs> well, possibly. I, uh, I, I do know quite a lot of. Uh, Gay people, mm -hmm. right? But they do, um, they do jump about when it comes to partners. Right. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> no, le le freedom of speech. Yeah. Let the man speak. No, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's quite, it, you know, they don't, you know, if they get bored, they move on on that. <laughs> which is fair enough, but they do, uh, and they only piece this together. And they go out late, don't they? Well, we've covered that, haven't we? We've done that. Yeah. How have you, so, you're, you- Do you know how he covered that? His favourite record is Killing a Georgie. And he went, at the end of the record, he went, see? But how late was it? Yeah. If he'd have been sort of going out at a decent <laughs> time, that wouldn't have happened. Do you know what I mean, Steve, though? They're, yeah. they're always getting ready to go out about half past one in the morning. <laughs> 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 you're asking for trouble. Yes. <laughs> Incidentally, I should just point out, that, um, oh dear. That uh, we've had an email. I've lost it here now. But anyway, it was one of our listeners saying that we've slightly embarrassed ourselves because, of course, Bruce Springsteen on the cover of uh, Born in the USA doesn't actually have a handkerchief in his back pocket. It's actually a red baseball cap. Right. So, um, well, well, I don't know if that also counts. I don't know if it's any kind of object. What does that mean, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, into heads, into little round heads. Ah, if Bruce Springsteen and he's obviously not gay, but if he said, "All right, Carl, um, just." You know, little cuddle. Would you turn down Bruce Springsteen? Yeah. Well, no. But why? Just like, all right, mate. You know, you, you hug your mates, don't you? If Bruce said, all right, Carl, I like your show, love your head, little cuddle, little cuddle, a mate's cuddle. No, I, I just. Oh, what you, I tell you, what you're doing. <laughs> you just say, look, we're mate, a couple of old friends. Look, Bruce Springsteen, I've got all those great songs. I like what you're doing. Let's cuddle. Let's have a little. All right, the mate. The only thing is, right, Steve. Right. Do you know how he likes to squeeze me? Ad. How much he likes to squeeze me? Ad. Yeah. We had a, an old mate over this week. He's got a similar shaped head, apparently, as mine. Yeah. Right. He's hardly gave me a call or anything because he was busy with this other fella's head. <laughs> oh, you feel ba quite bad about that. <laughs> oh, is this is a better head to squeeze. I will tell you why. Because he shaves his every day. 
right? He's got the same sort of air problem with him. Shows every day, right? Not a problem. No, no. And it's because he's had it several times. Like, Carl's sort of come through a bit long at the side sometimes. It looks a bit unkempt towards the end of the week. I've, I've seen there's a little, there's a couple of little pimples under there. Mm -hmm. Right, I really have to do it. Just like, get there, slap my hands on it, squeeze it. With this one, I can sort of get my thing, do you know what I mean? I can get my, mm, really, you know. You like, you like a gay, the way you jump about from head to head. That's <laughs> my record. Do you like saying, a gay? Just saying. <laughs> right, still coming up then. <laughs> what have we got going we got, up? We got Rockbusters. Oh, uh, is any monkey news this week? It's been a problem. Why? It's not much has been going on this week. What, in the monkey I mean, world? In the monkey world. I don't know if they've caught on to the fact that they're getting coverage. <laughs> <laughs> they're being, keeping their behaviour uh, hush hush. Being a bit careful, but uh, I found something. Have you got what uh, it, It's your last chance. Don't forget. Is it good? Do you, uh, well, it, just consult the list of oh, um, Dr. Fox-esque amusing Wife, topics. Wet ones, screwball, shop train, cheeky freak, Ronan. Ronan. What's what that? was Ronan? Ronan. I just was uh, telling you the other day about you know that that song that he does. Uh, Loving every day as if it's your last one. Right. Yeah. I'm just thinking he's saying that as if like, oh, I'll have a good day. But I reckon if if you knew it was your last day, I don't think you'd be in the mood to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what? That's true. But what, well, yeah. I but think but the point is that it's living a day like it's your last. So God, God, imagine if it was every day like the last. Right. Let's go mental. And the good thing is we got tomorrow. So he's got the best of both worlds. That's what Ronan's saying. He's saying cram it in because it might be the last. I think it's more like. It's the not knowing, isn't it? Live every day. See, I'd be, see, I'd actually be happy if, if I never knew mm. when I was going to die yeah. uh, and I was definitely going to die in my sleep, what a brilliant life you'd have. Do you know what I mean? What, so you don't get an illness but one night you go to bed and- I know that I, if you knew you were going to die in the sleep and never knew when you were going to die, it wouldn't matter if it was tomorrow or 30 years time. It wouldn't matter, would it? Yeah. I've lost you, haven't I? I've lost you somewhere. I can't, I can't, that was, see, I thought that was pretty easy, all that. I said, die in your sleep and not know when you died. There was no high concept there. No, no sleight of hand linguistically. What, where did I lose you? I think you lost him on sleight of hand linguistically. <laughs> Just then. <laughs> You've lost him again. Yeah, I, I think that's the way I'd, I'd want to go. I don't want, I don't want to know about it. That's why I don't go to the doctors or anything. <laughs> that's a good, Brilliant. good approach. And he, 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 do you remember him saying, he, uh, He's gonna die of cancer because he uh, doesn't check his balls. He doesn't like the feel. Of course, of course. What do they feel like? Your balls? Like a like a wet chamois leather. <laughs> <laughs> With two marbles, two kumquats in a wet chamois leather. No, but I just. I... Why are they wet? Sweaty. No, they're not. I'm just saying smooth. Are they smooth? Yeah, because a, a, a chamois leather's smoother when it's. Do you smooth. shave them? No, I don't. In case, of, in case a fireman pops around, you want to look your best. It looks <laughs> like your head. You know, the fireman pops around, there you are, and he goes, oh, nice, smooth. So you never go to the doctors? What even? I don't, I don't like it. But if you found some buboes under your arm or something, you... I'd wait for a bit, and I'd, I'd say to Suzanne, what do you think of that? <laughs> Just see if it develops into play. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, because you know, don't you? you know, old bandages <laughs> around <laughs> your head. Yeah. And a bell. Yeah. Suzanne, yeah. what are you about? Can you get me a bell? <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. I don't... You know, there was this kid at our school we took the piss out of for the basically the rest of his time there because when <laughs> he was about eleven, someone said, "How oh, would you want to die?" Right? We do that thing, drown in fire or that. He said, "I want to die of old age in my mother's arms." How old was he? About eleven, loser. <laughs> Oh, in my God. mother's arms? I know. What, getting off with her? What does that mean? <laughs> die of old age with my mother's arms. Oh, gee. <laughs> Brilliant. I want to die of old age with my nan and my mum. Yeah, all in the same bed. Oh, oh dear. So if you, if you, if, if it was the last day, if you had w one day to live, okay, yeah. what would you do with your day? Now let's assume that um, it's, you're not, you're not in a state of ill health. There's not much you can do. Though, it's just the end of the world and you What do you mean there's not much you can do? I mean, that's what we're asking you. It's the last day of your life. It depends, doesn't it? If, if, if we're all in the same boat, if someone says, oh, unlucky, um, without bitterness, like, oh, we accidentally exposed you to some radiation, boys, and you've got a day, or if it was like, there's a meteor coming this way, we're all in the same boat, it, I think it would be different. It depends whether it's you make and, no and the rest of the world. No? I'd do the same thing. I'd steal a car and go joyriding. <laughs> but, like, go mental. I'd be smashing stuff, I'd be knocking people over for a laugh. I'd yeah. be going crazy. It'd be like Grand Theft Auto. 
Right, <laughs> okay. extraordinary. Brilliant. Driving through parks. That's what, I, that's what park. I did in the getaway. Yeah. I tried to play it seriously, and with about ten minutes, I was just going around areas I knew yeah, trying to exactly. knock people over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I'd want to do that much. Seriously. You can watch telly, because you, you might not know how the thing ends. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, free waste uh, of time. You could watch 24, couldn't you? If you had a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On DVD. Do that then, do that. <laughs> do that, yeah. Well, but I mean, let's be honest, you, let's say you, you know, you can take all the money out of your bank account, you can fly anywhere in the world, you can do whatever you want. Well, you not a long got, flight, you could. Well, no, but you've got your girlfriend. Australia, you, you wouldn't make it, would you? No. Um, oh, why, why, you, why, why, why wouldn't you go to the monkey sanctuary down in Cornwall and just go around cuddling as many monkeys as you can? I'm gonna tell you something now. Go on. Go in there next week. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Taking my mum and dad away, because, like, Suzanne's mum and dad are there. <laughs> what, you're donating them? them? Most people put them in a home. <laughs> what are you going to say? How you a monkey sanctuary? It's cheaper. Taking taking them down, uh, yeah, taking them down to Cornwall. Oh, God, uh, I thought you said you'd never go away with parents again. No, no, but that was Suzanne's mum and dad. Oh, this is, is this to get so, even or something? So, yeah, so we'll do that, and then, then we'll can it, then. <laughs> <laughs> that was your outing. Oh. Your phone and both set to parents and it goes, right, you won't be seeing us ever again on holiday. We've taken you away, we've taken you away. Be careful that the monkey people don't buy you off your parents. Yeah. You and know, don't so make sure, monkey. make sure they don't leave any of the monkey's food in the telephone box because dad'll have that away. Yeah. No. I was talking to him about that the other day. About <laughs> the, uh, nicking in phone boxes. And he, uh, Should we just me. explain that to well, They live in a small village in Wales, and, uh, it's like one sort of utility store, and when it's shut, they leave you shopping in the telephone box across the road. And Carl's dad found out about this and goes and helps himself. Yeah, to other people shopping. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, go on. And, uh, I was talking to him about that, saying, you know, have you picked up any surprises in the phone box? And, uh, he said, no, no. We were talking about other stuff he used to do. Uh, one of them used to be going in this supermarket, right, in Manchester. Yeah. Needs a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Go in, take a new pair off the shelf, pop them on, leave his old ones there. Really? And walk out again. Yeah, brilliant. Floor. And then you go in after and buy his <laughs> FM hip hop classics compilation, which has got some really good stuff on there. Uh, new stuff from the likes of, uh, you know, Outcast and the Wu Tang, but some old classics from Public Enemy, and of course, LL Cool J's Mama Said Knock You Out. Mm. Which is one, it's worth having alone for yeah, that track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is, is this four CDs? No, two CDs. Um, the best air guitar album in the world, volumes one and two in a special box set. Yeah. We've got all sorts on there. There's May. Brian know? Adams is on there, Robert Adams, Palmer. May, Palmer. But also excellent stuff, Beastie Boys Clash, we got The Kinks, so that's good. Abigail's Party, the, um, the DVD thing with Alison Steadman. I know you're quite a fan of that, aren't you, Rick? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Which is, um, from many years ago, if you've not seen it, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, this, uh, later with Jules Holland DVD, it's got, uh, live performances from PJ Harvey, the Cardigans, Rollins. Is but he is, he is playing uh, Boogie Woogie over their tracks. I he? would hope so. Okay. Okay, good. And also, is this the new album from The Thrills? Uh, yeah, it is. Is it the album? Yeah. yeah. so that's a little, uh, little. Wow. Uh, is that exclusive? It's not even out yet, is it? Oh, no, not even what? out. Not even out. Well, anything. that's the sort of things that Carl can come up with if pushed. Well, let's. Doesn't it's really all about the game, though. It's all about the game. The prizes are just for fun. Mm. It's all about the playing the game. Let's yeah. see what Carl's come up with this week. This is his last chance. If I ever hear anything like new odour again, <laughs> that's the end. Mm. Okay. Well, they, they, they did get it, though, didn't they? So yeah. <laughs> working out. Did do it? Just a little, uh, well, let's have the jingle again. All right. Oh, Rockbusters. All right, uh, if you haven't heard it before, Cryptic Clues, uh, that make up a band. And some initials to help you on your way as well. Mm -hmm. right. So, uh. Well, you'd never get it without, but go on. First one, uh. That fella likes sucking on iron. Right? That fella likes sucking on iron. Yeah, the initial, uh, M. Right? Okay. That fella likes sucking on iron. Right, that's the first one. Second one, uh. The Jamaican fella spots a boat. Oh, God. Say that again. The Jamaican fella spots a boat. Spots a boat. Yeah. Right. The Jamaican fella spots a boat. Yeah, that's right, yeah. All right. Initial there, D. 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 Okay. D. 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 All right. And, uh, the last one, uh, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, you own it. Right? Interesting. I, I've just got number two. Right, uh, do you want- Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, The go third on. one, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, you own it. And what's right? the initial? E. All of them again, quickly? Right, so the first one. That fella likes sucking on iron. That's M. Second one, Jamaican fella spots a boat. Right? That's, uh, D. And the last one, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you. It's, you know, you own it. Right? 
That's but this is it. Like it's a whole story yeah. by the end. That's right. uh, that's E. For Ricky Gervais at XFM dot co UK. Please email don't only. Email and we cannot be bothered to answer the phone. Ricky dot Gervais at XFM dot co dot UK. Brilliant. Why right? Excellent. Red Hot Chili Peppers, universally speaking, on XFM 104.9. Well, halfway through, Steve. I'm Ricky Gervais. That was uh, Mr. Merchant I was referring to there, as Steve. <laughs> Familiar. <laughs> friends by now. Five years in the making. Carl Pilkington, I've known him a year and a half, but he's a good friend as well. Alright. Alright, <laughs> XFM, where paths cross. <laughs> Alright. Oh, so, uh, any interesting things to talk about, guys? Dr. Fox style? Uh, Any amusing observations? Have you taken a sideways look at the, the week's news or anything, Carl? What have you? I'll tell you what I did here last night. Go on, go on. Um, Five Live. They yeah. do like a, a review of what's gone on in the week. We've been busy in the week, I haven't always got time to, to follow what's going on. In the world, sure. Yeah. Uh, someone's made a chicken with teeth. <laughs> 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 what? For what reason? <laughs> Don't know, because they can. <laughs> Just because they can, and, and like they, they so it chooses food. Yeah, it had a, they had a few guests saying, "Well, you know, where will it all end?" Uh, so you, you you sure you weren't watching a Wallace and Gromit video? No, s seriously, no. It's uh, they're doing it. They're a chicken with teeth. Why would they spend millions? Researching what do you mean they've got a chicken with teeth? What the? F what do you mean there's a chicken with teeth? Sounds mad, doesn't it? What are you talking about, Carl? That's what they've done. Do you know, like why? I don't know. He's just messing with science and that, and that's what the people were saying. What? Why are you doing that? Do you know what I mean? Where? Where will it start? What's the next thing? They did the sheep. They did the cloning. Right. The rat with an ear on its back. Did that. Um. Can hear a mouse, uh, cat coming, can't yeah. it? Uh, what else were they talking about? They were talking about that sheep again. That that cloning one. Yeah, Dolly the sheep. Do you think it's that clever? Well, they, 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 they do all look the same anyway. What's it got to do with its cleverness? The fact being cloned. That being cloned, is it, is it, do you think that's a good thing? He doesn't think it's that impressive because they look the same anyway. Right. They could have just put any sheep in there and go, look, no. they're the same. Yeah. Brilliant. So there was a programme, people were talking what about- What are you talking about, a chicken with teeth? That's, it was the latest news, it was like all about the war and that, and I was like, yeah, 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 and then it said chicken with teeth, I saying, hang on. Your ears perked up. Yeah, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't hear anything about the war, did you? That was like, they might have been as well speaking French, or just like whistles. What's and now, story about a chicken with teeth. Yeah. You stop washing maybe, up maybe there. Maybe someone, someone can let us know, you know. Oh, God, don't open the floodgates. No, but I'm just saying I don't know the full thing. They just of course you don't. Surprise, surprise. They just touched on it. Yeah. Anyway, other stuff I did do proper research on in the week. Go on. Uh, having uh, testicles done. <laughs> having, your, having your testicles done. Yeah. What does that mean? Same magazine that was doing the hanky coverage. Uh, <laughs> right. And you know what all that's about. Um, <laughs> Sounds like a great magazine. How can we get him as a pundit on these news shows like Newsnight? Do you know what I mean? Sky, Sky, Sky News. On there, wouldn't he? Just on there, just asking what they think. Wouldn't that be amazing? Is there a producer out there that would take a chance on Pilkington? It's Pilkington, Raggy Omar, Ian Hislop, and they a panel of people, and they just ask ask people. Yeah. So, yeah. so you can have you can have your testicles made bigger. Why would you want to do that? Well, that's what I was asking. What's the point? Well, the actual testicles, or do they just inflate your ball bag? Because you could do that, couldn't you? You could uh, have some air injected, so it was like a big, <sighs> so they'd look bigger, but they'd rattle around inside, wouldn't they? Make a little noise, wouldn't it, when you're. At... <laughs> <laughs> like a manakas. <laughs> like some kind of instrument. <laughs> yeah. Like was sort of one of those African instruments, it's like a big sheep's bladder with yeah. all There's Pedro on the manakas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just, they just, yeah. Yeah, just stripped to the stripped to the waist. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, with us hanging out. Why, and then why, when why then when you sort of like people, the neighbours would think, What's he doing? He's 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 been playing those manakas all night and really you were Yeah. You know. <laughs> Why, why the mouse with the ear on its back, go and keep it down. <laughs> yeah, this is really <laughs> loud to me. <laughs> eh? Why, why, why would someone have that done then? What's... Uh, you brought it up! Yeah, well, presumably so that they could draw a little funny face on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously. And you could let them down after the holiday, like you do a lilo. <laughs> exactly. <Just> <laughs> <let> <laughs> them... <laughs> yeah. yeah, on holiday you're floating round, you know, like yeah. you're just in the sea. With your big instrumental manakas, right? Just floating. <laughs> you having a whale of a time. Yeah. People playing it as they go past. Exactly. All right, Carl. 
Oh, you become yeah. a bit of a sort of local celebrity. Yeah, that there's Carl with his floating minacas, like a big yeah. jellyfish, right? Yeah. And then the end of the holiday or Saturday, <laughs> if you've got a little pair of tight speedos, it'll be, it'll be like Jordan walking around. <laughs> and then he's like, <laughs> just let him down when he comes. Let up the knackers down for the plane. Mm. Yeah, because they, apparently they do. Uh, they do get bigger, don't they? As you get older, when you're an old fella. No, I think they get lower. I think that's it. That testicles and breasts get lower. Is that purely gravity? I think so, yeah. Probably stretching a bit, isn't it? So is it- is Wear the old, and tear. Is the old fellas who are walking about saying, oh, sick of these. <laughs> yeah, they don't tread on them. Well, that's you know, why old people have always got to have a little sit down. You know, yeah, yeah. Meters. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or they can have a- I suppose you can have like a little ball lift. You can have a face lift, can't you? Have a little nip and tuck. Put on, or probably a face lift would help, wouldn't it? Because that- if you pull oh. your face up- that's gonna that, bring the skin yeah, up. Bring up a little bit, yeah. Don't go too far. You'll have a little knob as a tie, but you can, <laughs> you know, it, you can tighten stuff up. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Steve with his kipper tie. That's a lovely tie you've got there, <laughs> Steve. And you look so young. Yeah. <laughs> What's that little sack underneath it? That little brooch. <laughs> well, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Playing um. with your little manacas all night, Carl. So a chicken with teeth. And you can have your balls done. That's imagine, Im imagine Kirsty Ward, whatever her name is, on Newsnight saying that. And now <laughs> two features of the yeah. week: the war in Iraq. Let's forget that. Who wants their knackers done? And look at this chicken. Carefully bite. I think we should send this link to Doctor Fox and see if, <laughs> <laughs> see if he thinks it's an improvement on what he heard during the show. Play record. Play yeah. record. Yeah, get this link. Send it to Doctor Fox. He'd love it. All right. Right. Plus, he'd be offer, able to offer some kind of medical explanation. <laughs> yeah, exactly! <laughs> Teenage fan club. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> One of Kurt Cobain's favourite bands, apparently, Teenage Fan Club, and that was the song Radio. He loved them. We've just had a, a, an email here. It says apparently the they created the chicken with the teeth in order to prove that DNA can be reverse stimulated. The theory being that if you can revert chickens to a state in which it has teeth, I don't know if it ever had teeth, you can alter someone's DNA to stop them going bold. Carl, did that? Does, did they mean that because birds came from reptiles that had teeth outcrops and then changed into a beak or whatever? Mm -hmm. That they revert. I don't understand. They revert DNA. I mean, there's not not quite enough science here to, for me to be able to answer it in detail. Well, not for us, maybe. But I think Carl's probably grasped it. What do you think that means, Carl? <laughs> yeah. What What does he say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, <sighs> life's too short. What else is there? Have you got monkey news coming up soon? Um, like I say, it's been a struggle. We'll 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 do that. We'll do. Uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week, do you want to... Oh, definitely. Should we do Cheeky Freak, we of, the cheeky freak of the Week? I can't wait. I've, I'll always do these. I'd start off with these. All right, well, let's have the jingle for Cheeky Freak of the Week. Oh, no. Do you remember it? No. I remember it. Oh. Uh, oh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Brilliant. Something like that? <laughs> I want some more, because that was slightly uh, half-hour. Oh, high. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Excellent. Right. This, uh, we're going back again. Yeah, 17th right. century. Uh, well, it was it was 1829, right? Oh, I'm impressed. Um, yeah. Now the problem is with cheeky freak of the week. Um, not so much the week, is it? If you're going back to 1829. Well, not even of the century. You haven't even done cheeky freak of the century. Mm. There's what's the problem with cheeky freak of the week? Just because, <laughs> other than the sort of moral implications. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, last week it was a fellow with two heads. Yeah. Mm. We've done Siamese twins. It's Siamese twins again. Oh, no, Siamese it was twins Siamese again. twins. It wasn't a fellow with two heads last week. It was Siamese twins, conjoined twins. Sorry, they're two different people. Mm. This is what I'm telling you. But this is the problem. They're going to crop up quite a lot just because they've got double a chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, uh, please don't write in and complain. He knows not what he does. You understand, don't you? Uh, Carl will actually feature one day in this section. Yeah. So. Right, go right. on, well, Carl. We're, go we're going back to uh, 1829. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, All the way back there to 1829. This is a retro conjoined twin link. <laughs> uh, a couple of guys set up a business. Uh, they were called Chang and Ang. Oh, they're the first. That's why they were called Chim Siamese twins because they were weren't, weren't. Wasn't that what it was based on? Those two, Chang and Ang. Was it the original? Yeah, that's why they're, they're called Siamese twins because I think they were Siamese. 
So these are the first ones? Uh, well, they're not the first ones, but they're first the ones one. that got to fame, I think, and why people started calling them, the people started calling them conjoined twins, Siamese twins. I think mm. I'm right there. Anyway. Good. Um, well, the, the sort of, uh, set up business, sort of going around, uh, the US. Well, both of them. And Europe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what they used to do, people were amazed by it anyway. But yeah. People wanted to know how they get through life doing certain things that, that you, that you think about. When you think about Siamese twins, you think about, you know, how do you get through a day like that? Yeah. Right? Um, and the thing that cropped up the most with people was how they take a bath. So they used to go on tour around the US and Europe and, uh, sit in a bath. <coughs> Have a have a wash on that. Mm. And, uh, Did they ever wash each other by mistake? They go, oh, 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 that ends there, that ends there. Like those things in supermarkets, they put <laughs> yeah. one of those down. We go, oh, 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 oh. What you do you mean? put that there? What do you mean? You know the things on the conveyor belt, the little the little dividers. Yeah, they but, wind me up those dividers. I sorry, I said a complete tangent, but I, for some reason, it's my own psychosis. But I get so annoyed if I'm in a supermarket, I've got my shop and I'm just about to get served, and you can always see there are certain people who stand behind you getting edgy, itchy, worried that I'm not going to put the divider down to separate my shopping from theirs. It's like they're terrified that I'm somehow going to deliberately pay for their Sneak shopping. Sneaking their onion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't get an onion, I'll have that. Mm. And it's just, but what annoys me is it's not so much that, obviously it's a practical thing, mm. it's the fact that they get a little bit edgy. You can actually see, certainly kind of, um, dare I say it, certain breed of woman and a certain breed of fella will uh, just get a little bit itchy, a little bit edgy, and they just they just look at you, you can just see them sweating, especially if they can't read. I just lean over and do it myself. Well, I know, but it's the thing is that it's like they almost feel that they uh, they ought to wait for me to do it, as though somehow it's my obligation. And it just annoys, for some reason, it's I know it's ludicrous, but it really annoys me. And I actually deliberately don't put the divider down just to see them sweat. I like the way that they're, that they're actually quite well made. There's some that are brass with like a yeah. felt bottom. Yeah. Like you really care. Like a, a twig would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? But uh, I just leave a slight gap. And then yeah. when it gets to the, when the woman's putting it through the, the till or the guy, I just say, that's my stuff. Do you ever look at other people shopping and go, oh, I should have got that? Often. Oh, yeah. That's annoying. It's, I'll tell you what it is, it's the same thing, and again, it's my psychosis. When people, if you're on a bus or a train, and we're pulling into the stop, but there's a good, you know, kind of 35 seconds before we're actually going to come to a halt. They there. leap up, they get and they're first, straight yeah. by the door. Yeah. Like, but it's this fear that something, they're going to miss out. Oh my god, what if I fell over yeah, now and broke my ankle, I'd never get be, out. To be fair, I've never had that, that, um, commuters worry, I've never commuted, but every second counts, doesn't it? Because you miss a train, it can make a difference of half an hour. So that's why commuters literally run to but, get their connections. But the thing is that with a bus, yeah. Um, you, you know, there's often you'll be people who are sat right next to the exit, will get up and stand up for a while, waiting to get out. It just, again, I'll I'm not saying what, it's not, it makes I'll perfect what, sense when to them. You've got a day it's to my live, psychosis. They're going to be mowed down in the streets. <laughs> they will you're just gonna, be a few you're of You're going to be in a lovely Chrysler. Exactly. Yeah. Just well, I will be going straight through a branch of Waitrose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> taking people out in the in the. So in the uh, we do not condone going through Waitrose in a car. <laughs> in a car. Now it's Chang and Ang. They're in the bath. They're washing their own bits. They've got one of those dividers, right? They go, "What? Well, that's that's definitely yours. I marked mine. Mm. That's definitely mine. What? Don't wash that, Chang. I won't. I wouldn't, Ang. I wouldn't wash that. Right. So what what are they doing? They're in the bath. Carry on with the story. Uh, that's about it, really. I mean, Jesus. that's, that's the, <laughs> the fact that people... So, two people, two little oriental fellas, joined in the hip, had a bath. No, no, that's no, That's no. your story. No, they didn't have a bath. They sort of, everybody, they must have done some sort of research, right? Who? Changarang, right? And they said, well, what do people want to see? Isn't that a Bay City Rollers song? But it's an idea that people have queued up, they've paid their money, they're in a tent, they're going, well, I hear they're going to have a bath, they're going to have yeah, a bath. Two, two Siamese people are going to have a bath. How would they possibly do it? Well, I've heard they'd get into a bath. But that, uh, that's I don't what know they, what they, they wanted to see them nude and where, where the join was. No. More than uh, how do you get in the bath. I don't know, they just, that's, that's what they picked. <laughs> they said, what, what would be good to see, what, what, what do you, you know, what do you want to see them do? Having a bath. How do you get into trousers? Was there, was well, there exactly, this is all part of it, isn't it? That's why they picked having a bath. <laughs> this is all part of it! Well, then, what should we get dressed afterwards? Yeah. Who was the best out of Chang and Ang? Who was your favourite? Uh, they both look the same, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> There's a surprise! One was a short ginger woman. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, 
is there anything you you know what what would be better than having a bath for you when you'd seen them what what would sort of make you go oh I wonder I one know. of them pulling and the other one going home alone yeah I go look look oh, just, she's definitely up for it I'm taking her home and go oh, what am I going to do can I watch definitely not definitely not look you go to bed I want to. I want to wine and dine her. But if they, if they, if he's got her back to their place <laughs> and they're going at it hammer and tongs, but are you saying one of them? No, hammer and tongs were their cousins. <laughs> right. They lived. They lived miles away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if one of them gets knackered, can the other one take over? <laughs> God, I think we play the, a record. That annoys me. What? what? That, that sort of being at it all night. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's put a song and I'll come back. What to do you it. mean? No, no, no. Come seriously, on. Seriously, because. Okay. Uh, R.E.M., yeah. Well, uh, after oh. R.E.M., night swimming, being at it all night, and why it annoys Carl. the pots again. Relations. Night Swimming by R.E.M. Well, before we played that track, you remember Carl was on the, uh, right, teetering on the cusp of telling us why he's annoyed at going all night. I assume you, you mean... Intercourse. Relations. Yeah. What do you mean? What annoys you about that? What, what? Sexual relations all night. The concept, or people keep you up. Is it your next door neighbours or something? No, just, just that thing of people who say, oh... Was that it all night last night? <laughs> who says that to you? You know, lads who think they're, uh, you know, they th think they're a bit of a lad and think that that means it's good. What, like yeah. Sting and his tantric sex? Sting. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair, it goes for eight hours, but only three minutes of that is going for it. The, the other sort of, you know, seven and a bit is sort of laying next to each other, isn't it? <laughs> right. And sometimes in a different room. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that why it's called Sting? <laughs> hey? Well... If you're at it all night, bet it. <laughs> it's gonna sting. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your problem with this notion of going at it all night? It's just that thing of, uh, you know, get it done right the first time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Get it done. Yeah, get in, get out like the SAS. Once you've done it, you've done, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no fanning around. No messing about. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just that, innit? It's like, you know, <laughs> do it right the first time. Once you've washed up, Right, you put the pots away, you don't dirty them again. <laughs> what a lovely analogy. That's one of the great Is that, is that what you say to Suzanne? Come on, love. Once you've washed I've up. I've already washed up. You don't dirty the pots again. <laughs> God. What a romantic Ding dong. Song. Hello, is there a fire? Oh. Hello. <laughs> Did he have a moustache, the fireman? Oh. Radiohead. They're there on XFM 104.9 on Wicked Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington with the answers to Rockbusters, the, the biggest quiz on radio, probably. Mm -hmm. Do you want to remind us the quiz? No, 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 you mean the crappiest quiz on radio. Yeah. Right. Um, first one was, uh, that fella like sucking on iron. Yeah. Right? The, uh, the initial was M. Yeah. What was the band? It was Metal Liquor. Right. What's or Metal Liquor? No, wait, wait, I've never heard of a band Metal Liquor. Metallica. Metal no, you said, yeah, you said Metal Liquor, I don't understand. Yeah, me Metal Liquor, Metallica. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, say yeah, it again, say it again and try and make Metallica sound like Metal Liquor. <laughs> me Metal Liquor. 
Metallica. <laughs> Me- Metallica. <laughs> Is he having a fit? <laughs> Say it again. Make Metallica sound like metal liquor. Metallica. Metal liquor. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, second one, the, uh, Jamaican fella spots a boat. That, yeah. that was easy. That was D. That was Divage. Uh, you got that. Make it sound like the band? Divage. Make it sound like a Jamaican fella saying, spotting a boat? Divage. <laughs> right. So you got that one. Okay. And, uh, the last one. Do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you. You own it. Yeah. Right. That was E. That yeah. was your rope. Right. Europe. Europe? Right. Who did the final <laughs> countdown? So that, that's the... No, uh, what, what, we've let that go? <laughs> that's the three answers for this week. Who's the winner, Steve? Well, again, I mean, there are lots and lots of people who got it right, Rick. So I don't know if it's just us that think this is rubbish. Right. But, who's winner, um... Who's the winner? Well, you know, I'm always a fan of people with just something... A, a name, I don't know, that maybe tickles me. <laughs> yeah. And sadly, I did want to give it to... <laughs> I wanted to give it to Daniel Jowett. <laughs> Because I just, for some reason, Danny People Jowett... going to start, start, stop But sadly, I just realised he got it wrong, so I'm going to give it to a different Dan. So not only did you ridicule his name... He's not even getting the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, better luck next time, um, Danny Jowett. Instead, I'm giving it to Dan Mason, um, of Ilford. So he got them right, and he wins those prizes. Alright, well... Okay. More of that next week? I mean, what, what do we think? We'll, we'll, do, it, uh, we'll do it next week, then. Yeah. Again. Okay. What are you doing now? Got a record or what's that? Uh, hoople. Better mark the hoople. Oh, it's hoople. hoople. Yeah. Hoople. The hoops is. Monkey news? Next. Alright. <laughs> mark the hoople. Roll away the stone. Classic little ditty. On XFM 104.9. Alright? Play the jingle. Oh, is it? Is it? Brilliant. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news extra. <laughs> well, is there you, monkey news? Uh, I tell you what, I've been having a bit of a problem this week. Why? Um, I, I, it's just been a struggle. Normally, I can come into work on a Monday and there'll be something that's happened over the Saturday, over the Sunday night. Do you know what I mean? Over the weekend, the monkeys have done something. <laughs> been very quiet. I thought I'll be all right. Let's see how the week goes on. Uh, I don't know if they've caught on to the fact that we're giving this coverage now, mm. or I, I, I don't I don't understand. Normally people are emailing me stuff all the time about monkeys. Uh, been very quiet week. Uh, been checking. Uh, I was looking in books last night and stuff. Uh, so Is there bit, any monkey news? I, I've I've got some, but just because it's not that good. Something else I found out that I thought I'd share with you. Go on. I was looking in the Guinness Book of Records, right? Because I thought they'll have something in there about monkeys or something. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a little monkey. I think it lives in Asia. Right. Uh, there's loads of them live in Asia. Might and, just be travelling, but yeah. And um, something they found out. I don't know if they've got it right, and that's why I want to bring it up. Uh, apparently, it's the mammal, right? That's got sort of the the pointiest eyes, eyes that pop out of the red. Steve. <laughs> now, the thing is, right? I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Apparently, it's 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 the biggest with the sort of goggle eye type thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, go on. Apparently, they they come out of the red. Um. 1.6 centimetres. 1.6 centimetres? What, you mean they protrude? Yeah. They protrude from the head at 1.6. Okay. What, how, how long? Have you got a ruler, Rick? Right? <laughs> <laughs> 1.6. I'd say I'd be a little bit annoyed if the monkeys beat me. <laughs> well, I don't think it has. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Is there anything we can... I mean, what's 1.6? Oh, can you... It's about... Drop your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, um, well, oh, about three quarters of an inch. What do you think? 
I don't know. <laughs> Have they got it right or what? <laughs> Maybe I should come down to Monkey World with you next week. Uh, uh. So anyway, so that's that's not the monkey news. That's just something that cropped up. And sure. <laughs> I do know once when we were playing pool in the office, I think Lucy was your partner. Yeah. It was me and Ash versus you and Lucy. And um, you were having trouble because his glasses kept slipping down. So Lucy pushed his glasses up, his nose, but the glasses touched his eye. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he started it. He started it. Well, you're the one who joined in. <laughs> no, I know, and I feel, I'm, I feel bad now. Yeah. <laughs> makes me nervous when he goes, yeah. It's player record. No, I'm just trying to think about which part of your fat, middle-aged physique I can pick on. <laughs> the tits would be a good Yeah, stuff. yeah. Oh, the belly. Sure. Oh, what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, that, that's, what is that? Player record. Is that Monkey News for this week? Have we not got well, any other Monkey, Monkey News? news? Well, well, it's just, it hasn't been that good. I mean, the one that I found out here, um, because we've covered so much in the monkey world, right, the fact that we've done a monkey that was a sort of half man, We've done a monkey that got a got a decent job in a train station. Um, can you think of any of the other? Well, that's just there? some of the great monkey news from the past. That's what yeah. I mean. So that's what you got to compete with. So even though this is quite amazing, um, just I know, tell us. I know the monkey's got married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not another monkey getting married. <laughs> what do you mean? It's got uh, another one. You know, it was knocking about with some uh, woman monkey for a bit. Um, a woman monkey. <laughs> they decided to, you know, get married. Yeah. They did. What and do you mean they decided to get married? Was it uh, pressure from her parents? They had a, they had a good do, and, uh... <laughs> a good do! I love the spread! I love that. Just, Peanut volivons. Yeah. Cele uh. Celebrated in a pub, and then they both went off to the cage at night. That's, that's what I mean. Even though that is quite impressive, because... But it's not true. <laughs> or it's a joke. It's nothing. It's not... And an over website, official sort of news website. Two monkeys have married in Romania uh, after a whirlwind romance. Well, that's <laughs> after a whirlwind <laughs> romance. <laughs> God, yeah, yeah, a quick one hanging onto the rope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was in the tire. Yeah, he saw it. <laughs> yeah, he went. I have a go at that. They go. We got to marry her now. Yeah. Her parents came and said, "Do you just? Yeah. Did you just?" Shut he was in a zoo, knocking one off. She went, "I can do that for you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guess say so the monkey bridegroom was scared by the number of people attending the wedding and refused to get out of his cage. Oh. His bride was, <laughs> not was, bloody Hello Magazine again. No, it was no. I think it was like last minute nerves. Right, like right, you right. know, I, you, I'm yeah, single now. Thoughts. It's like you know, it's the big step. Yeah. But his bride enjoyed every minute of it. She was loving it. Yeah, she sure, looked lovely, sure. by the way. She looked lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did she look good? Reports she only appeared to have problems with her veil and dress. Do you see? You know uh, the. the this is the guest in I hope they didn't ruin it like Anthea Turner and maybe get sort of sponsorship PG tips or something. Tips <laughs> with strong plum brandy, so they got them drunk as well. So they carried on the celebrations at the pub and the bride was taken to her new husband's cage at night. I, I really, I, well, I apologise, play a record. I'll tell you what winds me up. What? Monkeys getting married. I know. And well, I'm not getting any action. And I got bigger eyes. Little by little, Oasis on XFM 104.9. Well, that's the show. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton. Carl, do you think it was a good show today? It was all right. Wasn't it with some? Uh, what do you think? What do you think the uh, the the uh, the loyal listener has gotten from today's show? What do you think? That we, what do you think that you know we've added to the world? Well, I think I think they know what they've got, right? But if someone's just tuned in, I can tell them they've missed out on some. Uh, <laughs> Some good stuff. They've Lovely. missed out on uh, Chang and Ang. Yeah. They're the uh, they're the two who are the one who invented <laughs> uh, they're the ones who invented you know the Siamese twin thing. Yeah, that's it. They invented it. Yeah. You've got uh, you've had like I would spend our last day, yeah. right? Running people over. Chicken with teeth. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, he says it like you know. There's no other show that could yeah. give you all this. Yeah, go on. Uh, gay Ankies, we've done that. Yeah. No one will be having a problem there tonight. Yeah. Uh, another monkey marriage. <laughs> another monkey. Another it one. sounds like the end of the news. Yeah. You know what I mean? The headlines on Sky News and headlines on, and another monkey marriage <laughs> in Romania. 
Um, if you've thought about having your testicles bigger. Yeah. We've sort of covered that. Yeah. Um, and the monkey that, uh, that had big eyes. Yeah. Uh, if it's listening, you know, its position might not be safe in the Guinness Book of Records. Oh. If, uh, and, uh, and of course, um, Carl stays hard by looking at firemen. <laughs> Indeed, we've also learnt that. Well, that's, that's not, that's not true. Well, you, you did. Yeah. All we know is that you saw a fireman and nothing, it didn't seem to affect your uh, erection. <laughs> we avoided saying erection in for fact, two hours. In fact, if anything, it prolonged it from what we We've can tell. We avoided oh, saying just erection just for just two hours and then he just, just you know. Healthy bit. young man. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, sure, I'm sure he was. Fireman, I'm sure he was. But fireman, keep Carl hard. Right. You asked me to dinner, you brought me stuff. Amy Mann to end with. <laughs>